I want to tell you about an encounter I had on my morning run. Now, this one taught me a valuable lesson. I was about halfway coming up on one of my rest points when out of the bushes came a cow. Now, this is unusual to say the least. You know, I, I've never seen or heard a cow in my neighborhood, so I was a bit shocked. But then she started yelling at me, like long sustained cries. Mm, mm, basically telling me, uh, you need to back up or I'm going to charge. I don't even know what that would look like. So yeah, I slowed down and then backed off slowly. You'll come to find out the whole situation wasn't about me at all. When I looked a little closer, I saw a calf behind the bushes. You know, she was just protecting her kid. Then as I stepped back even further, I realized she had a whole herd of about 20 or 30 cows that were on the loose and they had broken away from the herd. So she was just trying to find her way back while also protecting her calf from getting hurt or more lost. I had no idea. And my first instinct was to judge her for yelling at me. And many times we judge people's behavior based on what we hear in the moment or what we see right in front of us. We don't necessarily look around for context. I know I don't. We don't look behind the bushes or step back to gain perspective to understand what's really going on. We just judge that cow for its aggressive behavior. But it wasn't aggression. It was protection. It was fear. And after a few moments, I, I saw her lead her calf back to her family. And they reunited and laid down together. See, I was just in her path. She didn't know how to handle me, so she responded. I mean, for all I know, she could have been asking me for directions, right? <laughs> like, like, how can I get back to my herd? I'm freaking out. I'm lost. Have you seen my family? But what I heard was, well, you better step back or I'm coming for you. And Meryl Streep, who I love, has an excellent quote here. She says, the great gift of human beings is that we have the power of empathy. We can all sense a mysterious connection to each other. And even though this was an encounter with a cow, it was like, it was like we were connected in some way. And once I stepped back, I felt for her. Like I wanted the best for her, for her entire family out there. So what can I learn here? I need to take a beat. Instead of rushing to judgment or defensiveness, I need to look. I need to look for the full story. And oftentimes it's not about me, right? Even though most of the time that's all I see, I may be a small detour, a roadblock when someone's trying to find their way home, right? Their world, their worries are so much bigger than that little interaction in that moment. And if I can understand or at least admit that I don't fully understand what they're going through, then I can acknowledge that, look, they're doing the best that they can in that moment. And if I can give people the benefit of the doubt and I can approach the situation with compassion, with empathy, right? I may not be able to help all the time. I may not be able to take them home, but at least I can remove myself as another roadblock on their journey. And in doing so, I just hope that I've earned the right to be treated the same way. Look, when I don't show up as my best, when I'm caught up in my fears or you know, not being completely understood. I just hope that others will show me the same grace and help me back to where I belong, safely, without judgment. Look, this cow was a simple metaphor for how we see people along our journey. And I just hope that I lead with understanding, that I can remove roadblocks and be the compass for others trying to find their way. We all have the power to shape our destiny. So let's go out there and make it happen. I'm known as the running guy around my neighborhood. 
every morning I get up and I meditate and then by 6.15 I'm out the door for a morning run before I start interacting and engaging with my family and building and creating for clients. Now I'm outside in the rain, snow, sun, it doesn't matter the condition, but being out there, it allows me to think and to create, to decompress, to step back from the busy side of life and zoom out, to gain a new perspective every morning. Like being on a, a mountaintop, looking down at my life, I can be a little bit more intentional because of that run. I've done this at any critical change point in my life from deciding to leave certain organizations to starting new adventures to where to raise the kids and more. You know, stepping back allows for a more holistic view of the challenges in front of us. Yeah, I'm free to be present when I feel like I've already been productive in the morning. Now, I'm not so hard on myself when I've already accomplished something at the start of the day. I'm just happier when I'm able to be out there. So as you start your day today, consider how you can zoom out of it. And what's your mountain where you can stand at the top and examine your life? And maybe it's closing the door to your bedroom for 10 minutes to stretch and breathe. Or maybe it's a quiet walk in your neighborhood with no headphones, no phone, just the, the sound of your footprints and your breathing. Think about what it's going to take to slow down, to clear your mind, to gain perspective and reprioritize your day. Check in with yourself and what's weighing on you? What's causing tension in your body? What do you have control over that can take that tension away? When you are on your mountain, the possibilities are endless. You can dream big fantasize about the most life-altering changes, and maybe you'll realize how freeing those changes could actually be. And maybe you'll want to act, or, or maybe you won't want to change certain things. Maybe you'll just be grateful for the small things you hope to hold on to for as long as you can. Either way, when you come down from your mountain, you'll be grounded. You'll be ready to take on the world. Remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. Living above the line is a choice. A choice to push beyond our limits, to embrace discomfort and to constantly seek improvement. It's about setting high standards for ourselves and refusing to settle for mediocrity. You see, when we live above the line, we take ownership of our actions, of our mindset, and our results. So if you think about the most successful salespeople and leaders that you admire, what sets them apart? It's likely their unwavering commitment to excellence, or maybe their relentless pursuit of growth, or even their refusal to accept anything less than their best, right? They understand that success is not an accident, but it's a deliberate choice, and they chase that every single day. So it's time to make a choice. It's time to level up our skills, our mindset, and our approach to sales. We have to start investing in ourselves to seek out the knowledge and the resources that will expand our horizons and sharpen our abilities. Whether that's attending seminars or reading books, listening to podcasts, getting with other salespeople, our manager, cross-functionally. Either way, it's a continuous immersion of learning throughout this journey. But knowledge alone is not enough. We know that. Living above the line requires action. And it demands that we step outside of our comfort zone and a embrace the unknown, which can be terrifying. But it's in those moments of discomfort and uncertainty that we truly grow. So take risks, make bold moves, and don't be afraid to fail because failure, failure is not the end. It's a stepping stone on the pathway to success. And remember, look, attitude is everything. Our mindset 
shapes our reality. So we have to choose optimism. Even in the worst times, we have to choose resilience and a never give up spirit. That's who we are. And when challenges arise, we view them as opportunities for growth and learning. We have to believe in our ability to overcome any obstacle that stands in our way. Living above the line also means embracing accountability. We have to take ownership of our results and strive for excellence in every aspect of our work. We have to be proactive, take initiative, and always go the extra mile, not only for our clients, but for our team, for our leadership. We have to become more. And our commitment to delivering value, that's what will set us apart from our competition. Zig Ziglar, one of my favorite sales experts and motivational speakers, said, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. Look, it doesn't just happen. So living above the line requires intentionality and a mindset focused on success. So as you go forth in your sales journey, make the choice to live above the line. Believe in your potential. Take action and embrace the challenges that come your way. And remember, you have the power within you to reach new heights, exceed expectations, and achieve greatness. So keep striving, keep growing, and never stop living above the line. What is it like when what you've strived for suddenly becomes a reality? Sometimes we miss it, but there are those moments when we look around and we catch it. On my morning run last week, I, I looked down to restart my podcast that I was listening to and I happened to check our subscribers for this channel. And we went from 327 to 429 in an instant. Now I thought I was dreaming. I had no idea. Days before, I was checking it almost every minute and nothing. I mean, maybe one or two would trickle in and then suddenly a hundred and at once. And less than a week later, we were over 2,000 and we haven't stopped growing. But what do we do when we suddenly realize that we're living the dream that we've been striving for for so long? We spend so much time setting goals, building plans, creating metrics to measure success. We analyze and evaluate how to be better, do better, work towards something bigger. Often meeting our goal only serves as a reset to set a new one. You know, I got 1,000 subscribers, now I want 5,000. I hit my sales quota this quarter, next quarter I need to surpass it by this much or that much. But what if? Before we said, what's next? Instead, we paused. We took a breath. We checked in with what it took to get there and acknowledged how far we've come. We took a moment to be proud of ourselves. We took a moment to celebrate the win, big or small. Yeah, we'll set the next goal. We'll make more plans. We'll continue to push and grow because that's who we are. But for now, let's stand still just long enough to look around and realize that we're right in the middle of it. Long enough to allow ourselves to laugh out loud, to, to grab the people closest to us and say, hey, we're here. We have arrived. We're living it. It's in these moments that we want to tell the people that we care about how much we appreciate them, how much we value their support along the way and celebrate alongside them. So take the moment because it's these moments that will drive us forward to the next moment and the next moment and the next one after that. So I'm going to take today to celebrate 
because I know the work and the effort it took to get here. And while I don't know what will happen the next time I look or you know, what the next month or few days will look like, it's just a quick sign that I'm on the right track. And I just have to keep going. I have to keep building. So thank you for your support along my journey. I'll keep going, keep striving, keep building. You're on the right track. And remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. I want to encourage you to become a shopping list person. When you go to the grocery store, there are two scenarios. Either you have a shopping list or you don't. And what happens? If you have the shopping list, you've been adding things, maybe with Alexa, add this, add that. So you walk in and now you have a shopping list. You go to the aisle, maybe you look for a quick sign or perhaps you ask someone, but you know where you're headed. After you grab each item, you check it off and item by item, you get this rush. And then at the end, when you check out, you feel complete. You have everything you need. Then the opposite scenario. When you walk into the grocery store without a shopping list, what happens? You wander. Especially if you're hungry, you're in trouble. Start grabbing things you likely don't need and might spend extra time just wandering up and down the aisles looking for items that might come to mind. You don't really ask anybody anything because you're not really sure what you're looking for. So you're grabbing things, putting them in the cart. And when you check out, well, now you have a bunch of things that you don't need. You walk out and immediately it's like, ah, oh, I have the cookies, but I forgot the milk. And so in life, we have the same opportunity. You know, the grocery store is obviously an analogy for our life. It represents that. And there are things out there. There are aisles and aisles of possibilities, guides along the way, people to help us find what we're looking for. But if we haven't created a shopping list of what we want, of what we're after, then we're just wandering. And after every event, we say, oh, if I only would have, oh, I forgot this. And we want to go back, but it's just easier to move forward. So we go through life and these wandering moments constantly stack up and they become who we are and what we have and where we are in life. So I invite you to become a shopping list person. Shift your perspective, shift a little bit of your activity so that you're intentional when you walk into that grocery store, whether in your personal life, professional life, your sales career, your goals, start adding things to your shopping list. And when you arrive at the grocery store and you pop it open, you go for exactly what you want. And maybe you get some guidance along the way, but when you check out, you feel complete. We all have something that we're known for, that we're fairly good at. And for me, coaching is what I do. But years ago, when my wife signed me up to coach my five-year-old son's flag football team, that was a completely different story. So what do you do when you're thrown into unexpected waters? I mean, now you're in open water and the ocean and the waves are coming. Do you still remember how to swim? And even though you do, it's still a choice in those moments. Yeah, you can stop paddling, stop fighting, just let go and drown, right? Some voice in the back of your head is whispering to you, hey, that would be the much easier option. You can doggy paddle or float using just enough effort to stay above the surface or you can remind your body and your mind that you know exactly what to do and you lean in and you go well that was the decision i made eight years ago and that first season hey it was a disaster 
But then shortly after, I started to find my sea legs. I started to find my breaststroke. I started to figure some things out. And I remembered that I had the skills to make this happen. And today, not only am I still coaching, but now I coach other coaches on how to step onto that field with competence. How to brave those treacherous waters with confidence, not just floating through it. And I empower those coaches to dive in so they can impact not only those kids and yes, their parents, but their entire community. Sometimes we forget how capable we really are. Just because you're thrown into a deeper pool of water doesn't mean you don't know how to swim and swim well. So make the decision and make the choice to lean in. To make the most of it, not only in that situation, but for the entire role that you're in, because you're exactly where you're meant to be. So start kicking, start breathing, and you'll be swimming like you've never swam before. We've all heard the quote, believe you can and you're halfway there, from Theodore Roosevelt. Napoleon Hill says... You can do it if you believe you can. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself because you are more capable than you can imagine. And remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. I want to talk about our need for approval. It's crippling, and it doesn't allow us to make the impact we're supposed to be making. The second guessing, deleting and rewriting, the constant doubting, it's not okay. And I'm here to remind you that you are more than enough, and you don't need anyone's validation to live your best life every single day. And there's a trick that will turn it all around. You know, in our journey of life, we often seek approval from others, wanting them to like us, to accept us, and it becomes all about us. But remember, the key to true success and happiness lies not in needing their approval. It's not about us. It's about approving of ourselves and then surrounding ourselves with those that we can impact. Where can we make the greatest impact? That's where we belong. Tony Robbins once said, the only limit to your impact is your imagination and commitment. So instead of seeking approval, think of ways that you can serve and make that impact. I have this concept called servant ownership. And the whole idea is that you take ownership of how you can help others get what they want. You step into your role as a leader and you own it fully. How can I help X get Y? That's it. This replaces your need for approval as you shift your focus away from you to helping and providing value. You see, when our dreams become about others, magical things happen. Walt Disney said, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So stand with courage. Not looking for acceptance, but looking for a way to lift, to encourage, to empower, to build others up to greatness. See, when we help others, we in turn help ourselves. We get out of our heads. We look at the mirror differently. And usually, we end up exactly where we belong. When you seek approval, it's all about you. When you seek servant ownership, It's all about them. And that's a a freeing feeling. It takes the, the pressure off and allows you to create and build something special. So let's start today. Let's have the courage to pursue our dreams that lie within us and let the desire to connect and uplift others guide us. And success will surely follow. Look, believe in yourself. Embrace your uniqueness and let go of the need for constant approval today. 
Let today mark the beginning of a new focus, an incredible journey of life filled with purpose, of joy, of abundance, where you take true ownership of serving and making an impact like never before. Keep going. Be intentional. Be complete. And always remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. Life is not as complicated as it may seem. In fact, it all comes down to one thing, choices. Each day presents us with countless opportunities to make choices. Some may be small, like deciding what to have for breakfast or which route to take to work. And others may be more significant, like choosing to pick up the phone and make that extra sales call or deciding to invest in your personal growth. But it's in these moments of choice that something extraordinary happens. It's that snap, that realization that you hold the power to shape your own destiny. You hear me talk about it all the time, but you can choose to take action, to push beyond your comfort zone, or you can choose to let fear and doubt hold you back. Now, choices do have consequences. If you choose to hit that snooze button instead of jumping out of bed, you'll have less time to prepare for the day. Now, if you choose to prioritize distractions over focused work, you'll find yourself falling behind. I mean, the weight of, oh, I should have, will surely show up. But here's the beauty of it. You can make a different choice the next time. Not only tomorrow, but today. Imagine a world where every decision you make aligns with your goals and aspirations. It's not just about wishing for success, it's about making the choice to pursue it relentlessly. As American author William Arthur Ward once said, success is not a destination, and we know this one, but it's a journey. And here's the part I really like, the doing is often more important than the outcome. So how do we make those choices that lead us down the path of success? I think it starts with self-discipline. You know, self-discipline is the fuel that powers our ability to make consistent, intentional choices. That word intentional is so critical. It's the willingness to do what needs to be done even when it's difficult or uncomfortable. It's not about being perfect or achieving instant success. No, it's about having the self-initiative and self-control to consistently take action, even in the face of setbacks. It's about embracing the process of growth and learning from every choice we make. So as you embark on your journey today, remember this. Life is a compilation of choices. Every decision you make, no matter how small, has the power to shape your future. Embrace the power of choice. Cultivate your self-discipline and watch your sales success take off. I often use the spaceship emoji in this arena because we are all just a few choices away from launching, from taking off, from living out our full potential. So why not go out there and make those choices that will set us apart from the rest? Why not choose to reach out to our prospects with intentionality, knowing full well rejection is coming? Why not choose to invest in our personal development, continuously honing our skills and expanding our knowledge? Why not choose to maintain a positive mindset even when faced with challenging circumstances? Why not? It's not about the quantity of choices you make, but the quality of those choices. So prioritize what truly matters. Align your actions with your goals and watch your pipeline, your life in general, take off. Remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen.